Well, <clears throat> as you see on the screen, I have got mortgages and land contracts. Um, I guess I may have misspoke earlier when I said I did them in order of priority because probably these are more common. <laughs> properties with mortgages are more common than properties in bankruptcy or estates. So someone's already pointed that, that out to me and I want to thank you, Debbie. Um, but <clears throat> I just thought I'd put them in order and doesn't really matter. Information's information. You're going to get it all before we get out of here. So let's talk a little bit about mortgages. Then we're going to talk about carrybacks or land contracts. A mortgage is a pledge to repay loan and uh, hypothecate or pledge your property as collateral for that loan. When the lender makes the finance to the buyer, which in this case we would call the grantee, that lender gives the money to the buyer, the buyer signs an IOU, and then he signs a mortgage at the table to pledge the property as collateral for the loan. The lender is going to want that lien that they place in the records by the title company to be first lien. They want it to be the first position, which means any subordinate lien or junior lien has to either be removed, i.e. paid off with a satisfaction, or they would have to subordinate to the new lien coming in to allow it to go to first. Now, bunch of words in there, let's make sure you understand. Subordination is an agreement between two adjacent lien holders to swap positions, regardless of the date it gets recorded. As you know, in the recording, first one in gets recorded first, paid off by priority. First one in typically is first priority, right? Shake your head, yes, unless there is a subordination agreement which would allow two adjacent lien positions to swap priority. So what you could get, theoretically, is some second lien that got recorded first and then some first lien, or should have been, got recorded second because of the time and date, but with the subordination agreement between those two, they flip and the one that got recorded second is now actually in first lien and the one that got recorded first is now in second lien. That happens a lot with refinancing. When a first lien refinances, it comes back in the date that they sign it. There could be a second lien in there, but the second lien will subordinate its position to the one right below it, which is now the original lien that got refinanced. So it technically becomes first lien, would get paid first with first money, even though it got recorded second. Got it? If you don't understand subordination, we can talk about it later or send me an email and I can go through a better conversation with you. But the lender is going to want their money to be in first position. Any junior liens or intervening liens have to be released or satisfied which is paid off when a seller pays off the property or subordinated to a lien. So real quick recap, $100,000 first, second, uh, $20,000 second, the seller sells it for $150,000, the first $100,000 goes to the first lien for $100,000, the next twenty dollars goes to the second lien for twenty, dollars and the seller keeps the $30,000. That's how that's how they get released or satisfied and the new buyer coming in now gets first lien because all of those were removed by the grantor or the seller of the property. It is possible, and I say that with tongue in cheek, it is possible to get a new first lien without paying the second one off, but they have to subordinate 
because they would then in fact become the first lien. It's like a Jenga puzzle. You pull the first lien out and pay it off. The second lien slides the first. And theoretically, third slides the second, fourth slides all the way down the line. But hopefully there's a first and second. You pay the first one off. The second slides to first. The new lien coming in from the buyer would go to second. That potentially, theoretically, possibly in the world of Disneyland could happen. As long as the second subordinates to that new lien, it would then become the first. Now, I am here to tell you I have never seen that happen, all right? Typically, the seller will satisfy all the liens, i.e., finger quotes again for those of you at home, i.e., pay off all the loans so that he can give clear title to the new buyer. Now, remember, general warranty deed says they are paying off all the loans. So you've got to be careful, or the underwriter would have to be careful, if the deed was being conveyed as a general warranty deed, yet they were doing this whole subordination trick, that might be problematic, and they may have to what, give an exception to that lien that didn't get paid off. In section B2 of the title work, where it has exceptions, that lien could be placed in there, and saying, hey, we're not insuring this lien. So it is an exception to the title work. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, the question was, why would they subordinate? It's a good question. Typically, most second liens or second loans or HELOCs or whatever you want to call them already have a clause in their uh, mortgage that says they will subordinate to a primary because they are being paid to be second, right? Anybody in here ever have a second loan on your house? Raise your hand. Okay, a few of you. What was the interest rate? Well, what was the interest rate compared to the, the primary? It's always higher, right? Don't have to give me exact numbers. It's always higher. The reason it's higher, because they are taking more risk, i.e. they're getting second money. So typically loans like HELOCs or second mortgages are at higher interest rate and they pretty much already have a subordination clause inside of them, all right? They're not doing it to be nice and they're all warm and fuzzy. They'd like for you to think that but typically it's in their documentation as a second loan that they will subordinate in case something happens, okay? Good enough? Talk to me later and we can talk about it more, uh, but it's basically mandated. They know that going into effect. Here, here, here's the second half of your question. If that lien doesn't have a clause about subordination, this deal probably wouldn't go through then because the underwriter would then look at that and go, hey, there's no mandatory subordination, which there probably is, but if there wasn't, they would have to go through the process of getting a subordination document signed by the second lender, which could cost time, which could cost extension on your closing or on the closing, and probably wouldn't happen anyway, so don't worry about it. All right, there's another thing called a land contract or purchase money mortgage. This is where a third party actually loans money and typically that third party is the seller himself. In the investing world, this is called a carry back. A carry back, so they're carrying back some of the money. So in other words, now, for this actually happen and this is actually an investing technique that we have to be kind of real careful with, Let's do a real easy example. The guy has a $100,000 loan on his property. He wants to sell it for $150,000. The borrower can only borrow $125,000. So there's a $25,000 gap. Everybody with me so far? He owes $100,000. He wants to sell it for $150,000. The new buyer coming in can only get a loan for $125,000 does this deal not work, right? Most of you would go, well, he can't borrow enough money. 
to pay the seller the 150. It's possible that the seller could take a second mortgage or a carry back where the other $25,000 is actually a, a second note in a lien that gets paid to the seller. So in other words, now the buyer writes his monthly, finger quotes, house payment to the bank and then writes a second, finger quotes, house payment to the seller as part of the $25,000 carry back. All right. Now, here's the issue. Some states will automatically put the seller carry back as the first lien, regardless of the recording. Okay. They, some states give it priority over institutional money uh, because they think the person has a higher degree of, I'm trying to think of the word, risk than a corporate institution like Chase Bank may have. So some states put that purchase money mortgage or that carry back as the first lien. <clears throat> now, he can subordinate, back to what we just talked about, he can subordinate to Chase and go to second, but why would he? Because he gets first money. So therefore, if this happens, the underwriter has to make sure that the carry back has the subordination clause. They also have to make sure that the institutional money is actually okay with this whole process. So there is some sticky problems for the underwriter to make sure that all of these documents get recorded in the right time or have proper subordination agreements or get satisfaction of uh, liens or releases so that the new buyer will in fact place their lender in that first lien, first position priority, okay? If you have other questions outside of the underwriting issues like what's subordination or I don't understand the carry back, I'm more than happy to talk with you here in a minute on break or if you're at home and you wanna email me, raymond at realuniversity.com, that's fine as well.